This is Subspace Transmissions. I'm Tyler. And I'm Cam. Cam, we just watched the Orville for the very first time. We did. The question that we want to answer for all our listeners out there, though, is will Star Trek fans like the Orville? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Uh, you and I, we just sat down I and watched know. it. We're going to go further in depth on the podcast this week. Uh, it's actually one of our longer episodes, which is kind of surprising. Well, you say that, but the Dominion War was far longer. That's true. Yeah. But uh, this was, of course... Uh, this was almost as good as the Dominion War. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what we really want to address, though, is whether Star Trek fans are going to dig a show like this. You were less into it than I was in, in that you did not really like this show at all. Orville. More like Snorville. <laughs> okay. I actually think that there is some potential uh, behind this. I think a lot of Star Trek fans would actually like this. They can appreciate maybe the spirit in which it is uh, kind of uh, executed. I think there's aesthetics that they would be like, oh, yeah, this uh, reminds me a lot of ne Next Generation. But how long will that spirit keep them going? That's the question. Well, that That is. But I just wonder if, you know, there's been this lack of Star Trek on television for so long. People could be like, hey, you know what? I remember it. I, I feel like it's 1994 all over again. I wonder if the thing that uh, interferes, though, is Star Trek Discovery is going to be premiering in, uh, very quickly. So maybe that will fill the gap that uh, has been missing for a lot of people all these uh, this past 12 years. And it also looks hilarious as well. <laughs> yeah. I, there might be just as many number of uh, uh, laugh out loud moments in Star Trek Discovery as there was in the, this week's episode of The Orville. <laughs> there can't be less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for you, Cam, I, I mean, are there yeah. any things that you want to highlight particularly uh, people should be opening their eyes to when they watch maybe the first episode or the first few episodes of The Orville? What are some things that stand out to you here, maybe for better or for worse? I think if you watched A Million Ways to Die in the West and thought, that was pretty good. You might make it through this and feel around the same way. Okay, that's a very uh, backhanded sort of uh, thing. But it is no, but I'm, I'm, can you talk to me specifically about what mm. did you witness in the Orville that you would figure people should be keeping their eyes on? Like anything uh, memorable that happened throughout this episode? That's like I said, for better or for worse. I think you know, just keep your eye open. There's a lot of homages to Star Trek. You'll see some motion picture shoutouts. Yeah, uh, and believe me, they won't be subtle. You'll uh, see them. What do you think? The, the Krill, are, are they supposed to represent like the, this kind of their version of the Klingons? What were they I exactly? I don't know because they look like Krall. Yeah, they look like uh, Idris Elba from Star Trek Beyond, but with like super, super like uh, white skin. Yeah. Which I, was... I mean, I guess they're kind of a mix of like the Klingon with the Borg type idea. They don't look like the Borg, but yeah. I feel like if you're going to do a TNG homage, the Borg are somehow tied into your homage. In yeah, a way. we we need more uh, cyborgs in this particular series. We had that one robot character from a legendarily racist planet. Right, that's how they uh, put it. Earth. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I think that's very topical for 2017. That's better point. than any joke on the Orville. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, what, what did you find about the maybe production values of a show like this? I think the money is on the screen. I don't sure. think anyone who tunes into this show is going to walk away saying. Boy, it looks like it was shot in a warehouse, or like say Agents of Shield, it was shot in a hallway. Yeah, okay, you know, of an office building. Um, I, I think you and I, we, we both like uh, some of the performances here. You had a lot. Of, if you go listen to the latest podcast, Cam's gonna have a lot of great things to say about Adrian Pledlicki, who plays the female lead. I think we both express concerns about what the women really have to do in this series. Yeah, I know. I they. This series does not pass the Bechdel test at this point. It doesn't know what that test is. I, I know, and it's very <laughs> kind of head-scratching, and Star Trek hasn't always had a great track record this when it comes... This show thinks that list is for losers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hope that they, they do better with the female uh, roles going forward in this one, but yeah. I, I think, yeah, look... It, well, you've got like some really good actresses, Yeah. so it, it's not cool to give them crappy material. Look... Uh, they have Cassidy Yates, one Penny yeah. Johnson Gerald in this particular series. I think there's potential for her to kind of uh, come out of her shell as a character here. Mm -hmm. um, the Doctor roles traditionally do give a lot of fodder, and, you know, to the actors. And in, in her introduction, the character made it very clear that she thinks that this captain, Captain Ed Mercer, played by Seth MacFarlane, is going to need a lot of help going forward. So maybe she can give him a good kick in the pants. Cam, your thoughts, Seth MacFarlane as the lead of the series problematic okay 
What would you say specifically is maybe the issue for here for you? I think Seth MacFarlane is a character actor who really wants to be a leading man. Yeah. And I think that's a bit of a problem. And, and I would say, look, it's weird because he has so much of what you need for a leading man role. He's got charisma. He's, he's got, got a good... hairline you would die for. Yeah. And he, he's got like good looks. Mm. You know, he's obviously a very smart guy. Um, whether or not maybe he would have been better cast as the Lieutenant Malloy role than um, Ship's helmsman, right? we'll find out. I, I say this is episode number one. There's a lot to uncover in the next 12 episodes because this show did actually produce 13. Mm-hmm. They just wrapped filming. We're going to get a full season out of this. We'll find out whether all 13 episodes air on broadcast television. Maybe they end up on Hulu. Who are knows? The, are the days of 22 over? The days of 22? I, I would have to say so. Unless you're... Yeah. Uh, uh, revival series like uh, 24 Legacy. Then right. you get a full 24 episode. Uh, 24 episodes. But I don't know. Yeah, maybe if you're NCIS. Cam, you watch a lot of NCIS, right? I do. I'm, How, I'm big on the old timey shows. Yeah, so you get like, yeah. what, 26 episodes in those seasons now? Uh, who knows? It's okay. so many adventures yeah. that I can't keep track of them all. So, um, uh, overall, Cam, you may not be tuning in every week, but are, are you curious to hear my updates if I do tune in at least for the next <laughs> few weeks of The Orville? I'm fascinated to hear. We're going to go in-depth in Cam. I... I Believe it. You and I, uh, it gets a little heated on the podcast this week, just a little bit. You'd think we were talking about box office numbers again. 